Don't wait until the eulogy to embrace men. Hey, bro, I love you, but I'm not supposed to tell you or show you, at least while other people are watching or while we're in the company of other men. Some people would rather get their flowers from other people. I'd rather grow my own. The weird thing about those flowers, many grave sites are riddled with them in words of men at their eulogies. Not enough praise, affection, accountability, while that man is alive or in thy presence. It's been a long journey, but I'm here. I can't say that for a lot of other men. At the funerals, they conduct eulogies. Friends, families pay tribute to the man who died. At the eulogies, it usually starts with the introduction of words. A welcome would detail how great of a person he was. A prayer and a scripture reading would make this man synonymous with noble characters in the religious text. Former reading of the obituary. They may allow others to speak and talk about fond memories that they share together, some kind words of the deceased. In closing, the leader of the ceremony will give closing statements and announcements, uh, talk about where the reception will be held. You'll find out where the potato salad and all this other stuff. Again, in this section of the eulogy, is more great words of this man that can no longer hear them and probably didn't hear him when he was alive. Now the saddest part is seeing that man have six to eight strong other men carry his casket, but didn't have six to eight men hold him accountable, be vulnerable with, let him know that he can express himself around them. Suicide among men is on the rise. Men account for over 75% of suicides and the rate of male suicide has risen over the past decade. In the United States, around 35,000 men die by suicide each year, which means one in every 15 minutes a man takes his own life. According to the World Health Organization, more, more than twice as many men die by suicide than women. That's 12.6 per 100,000 men compared to 5.4 100,000 women. Suicide rates among men are generally higher in high income countries, 16.5 per 100,000. Depression among men is made a mockery. The personal battles of feelings get lost in society translation of masculinity. Masculinity is a social construct that has taught and has significant impacts that damage the masses throughout our country. Depression, grief, trauma, and so many more things are not gender specific. The symptomology can look different in genders, but both men and women can get depressed, have anxiety, have issues with grief and trauma. In a private practice setting, I heard men say some of the reasons why they don't express themselves or why they don't acknowledge their pain. Some of the things I've heard star athletes say, I can't be depressed. I had 10 tackles. Depression is for cheerleaders. I put up 10 points, scored the winning goal. He smiles all the time. He, no way he's depressed. He can't be depressed. He makes six figures. Money doesn't equate to fulfillment. Men are weak if they let that girl stuff get to them. Anybody ever heard that? What is that girl stuff? Displaying feelings? Acknowledging your issues or your pain? But he's not crying in the room all day like in the movies. So thanks to Hollywood, we got this sensation of what's supposed to happen with depression and grief and trauma, and also what happens in private practice setting. He can't be depressed. He can get any chick he want. Don't wait till the eulogy to affirm the males in your life. Don't ignore the signs that are hidden with smiles and material things and 
these ideas that Hollywood display in movies. Over 30% of men will experience a period of depression some point during their lifetime. About 9% of men report having feelings of depression and anxiety on a daily basis. Some men have not found time to be happy because they're busy being strong. Do you know what it's like to be strong all the time? Just extremely hard for no reason. Your child's birthday party. At the zoo with cute animals around. At the fair with bright cotton candy in your hand. Just no expression. Like literally, no time to express joy or euphoria because it might be a distraction and you might like it. At the eulogy, people often feel guilty thinking to themselves, I could have done more. Why didn't I do more? The guilt is also a part of the grief cycle, depression, anger, bargaining, denial, and acceptance. Trying to figure out how you could have helped your son, your brother, father, coworker, or teammate shouldn't wait a second longer. I should have told them. I should have asked. The thing about feelings, they're easy to think about, just difficult to express outwardly. If a boy is allowed to express himself and be validated, the man he will become will also be expressive. We have to, start it, we have to end it before it even starts. I mentioned earlier that one in every 15 minutes, a man takes his own life. I'm not sure how long I've been standing here, but to think somebody's planning a eulogy right now, maybe even two. To my brothers, you must have the autonomy over your own feelings, not society. I found that boys and men express themselves in safe spaces where they don't feel judged. Or it's a relatable place like the barber shop or mechanic shop or the locker room talk. In those places, it's very cohesive. It's universality, that connection, that cohesiveness. It's relatable experiences, shared ideas, like-minded men bonding. You heard things like, I thought I was the only one. Dang, that happened to one of my boys. Why can't it be everywhere? Why does it have to wait to the eulogy for him to hear praise? To my men, feel your feelings. Be your authentic self. Don't treat affection like a reward. This should be a common practice, not something that you give yourself sparingly. It's normal to want to have a connection opposed to being barbaric all the time. The lack of connection can probably be traced back to an experience in that male's youth, a moment when he became emotionally numb, a moment where the attachment styles went out the window. It was probably a parent telling him not to cry, or boys don't do that from a neighbor next door or around the corner. Men don't hug other men or kiss their sons. Feel your feelings, except if you're in a traditional masculine setting, I guess, whatever that's supposed to mean. Feelings arise as a reaction to our emotional responses. And they may differ from person to person. Feelings are a representation of a person's inner state, not that gender trait. When faced with anxiety and depression, you might think humans would be better off without any feelings at all. But the truth is quite different. Feelings may make some have a sense of belonging, make some feel even welcome. Feel your feelings, a safe space for men. What does that look like? Feelings can be conscious or unconscious. Some men have been desensitized for so long 
that they don't know how important it is to feel. They don't know how to receive it or they don't know how to give it. A partner is waiting, a child, a spouse, teammate, even your coworkers is waiting for you to act. Don't get me wrong, when they're waiting for you to act, this can be twofold. Some are waiting to embrace it, and others are waiting to shame it. This is where we are within society. I mean, I'm sure y'all seen the memes of men being teased when they're crying or whatever the case is. Men often put up with minor difficulties that later can become greater difficulties if unaddressed. Men often don't display traditional symptoms of mental health challenges. He may instead act out, whether that's anger, aggression, drug use, reckless behavior, being promiscuous, which is oftentimes seen as a badge of honor in some cases. All of these factors can lead to mental health difficulties, being under, underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, or even overlooked. To be vulnerable, you need to be honest about the way you're feeling. Be vulnerable now, not at the eulogy. Recognize the way you're feeling and try to figure out what makes you feel this way. Allow yourself to express those emotions however it feels healthy. I challenge all of you to hug a male, embrace him. Tell him you love him and appreciate him. Be supportive. Be a support system, not an enabler. Life is fragile. Hard times will happen. At some point, we will have to go through difficult times, whether dealing with sickness, a crisis, relationship issues, issues at work. Silence speaks louder than words misspoken. 1% of what you could say is better than saying 100% of nothing at all. There is, something, there is nothing more humbling than having to admit that you don't have your life under control. Most men would rather avoid that talk or those situations, putting in that effort. Don't rush them through that pain. While many will say things with good intentions, it can also serve to minimize the issues and urge them to suffocate within that pain. People need to know that the pain is real and that they can move forward. Show them some compassion. Let them be honest when life is hard. Don't tease them. Don't make a meme about it. All those other things. Let them be whatever they need to be and resist the urge to label him soft. Just let him know he can count on you. Just be with them. Don't judge them. Don't allow them to be open. Allow them to be open and vulnerable. Do you think it's weird that men get more sympathy at that death than when they're alive? Whatever you do, please don't wait till the eulogy. Thank you.